Do you speak crowd lending? Welcome to our podcast covering the crowd lending industry. Our mission is to provide you with all the insights from this market and help you make informed decisions. I'm Gassen, co-founder and CEO of Acredius. We are a crowd lending platform based in Zurich, Switzerland. I'm delighted to host this podcast and hopefully bring value to all our listeners. Hi, everybody. I'm glad today to welcome to this third episode to welcome uh, Michael Boger, CFO of uh, CashShare. Welcome, Michael. Welcome, Gerson. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Michael. Please tell us more about yourself. Uh, thank you for inviting me in first place. My pleasure. Um, I'm 52 years old. I married two children, no pets. <laughs> um, first I studied science and then I switched to banking and finally to fintech. And now I'm with Cashier uh, for uh, nearly one year now. Excellent. So from science or microbiology, if I remember, <laughs> uh, to banking, to crowd lending. Tell us more about this journey. So yeah. How did you end up there? <laughs> I actually, I always loved uh, watching documentaries on TV about animals, uh, about all uh, the exciting things of science. And then I had a, I developed a romantic idea about biology. And when <laughs> I started uh, at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, I recognized that working, for example, in a lab, as a, finally as a microbiologist, uh, is fun too. And I even did uh, pretty much uh, same like you. I, I uh, studied in Lausanne as well. Yes, University uh, of Lausanne, right? At uh, University Hospital, I did wow. my thesis. After my thesis, I had to admit that I'm quite a decent biologist, but uh, <laughs> finally not uh, good enough for a academic career mm -hmm. because it's uh, extremely competitive and you have to be really passionate you have to focus only on science and nothing else apart and then i looked around and as usual in the zurich area you end up in a bank <laughs> it was <laughs> it was it was always written in the stars that i will end up in a bank and i started with one of the big banks uh, as a business consultant in the first place, I did this several years, and then I switched to product management. And then in private banking, I did several controlling functions. And over time, uh, I, I have now uh, 20 years of uh, track record in the financial industry. And I changed to cash air uh, this uh, winter, meaning 2019 in March. And I started there as a CFO, and I'm very happy there to take part of a, of a new, exciting business model of a whole industry. Uh, looking forward and uh, trying to, yeah, to replace uh, banking services part of. Great. So, Cashier is the oldest crowd lending platform yes. in Switzerland, yeah. right? So, how does this experience from cashier with all these years even though they are not like 50 years but a couple <laughs> of years how does this materialize us today yeah it, it's true we were uh, founded in 2008 uh, i think the term fintech was not even invented back then mm -hmm. and first of all uh, we acquired a lot of entrepreneurial uh, experience in every just business aspect mm -hmm. because uh, as you also face with your company you have al always these obstacles of course to uh, to take and to circumstance and we i think we have quite a lot of experience also to to survive in the market to find solutions mm -hmm. if there are challenges just in a general startup sense mm -hmm. um business wise we have well established processes we have lots of experience with nearly every case and with economical hip hiccups uh, mm -hmm. which can happen uh, during all this time and since we started we have accumulated data and therefore we can offer our clients a very sound uh, credit scoring mm -hmm. 
Um, we have developed over the years a proprietary technology which leads to a high automated scalable platform. Mm -hmm. And all these investments, uh, not only in a financial way, uh, but also in an in a emotional and in a, in a know, knowledge way, know-how mm -hmm. way, um, is now something we can, uh, we can go further and really grow the business. Many of our employees work now for years for cash air. That's the great. founders are still in the company and this gives together with the qualified newcomers an extreme stable basis for, for I think for every aspect of our business because as, as you know as an entrepreneur challenges are from day to day different <laughs> and, and you have to face them. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, to me our biggest treasure is our well-established crowd. Um, this, this big and diverse crowd of investors is our most valuable source of funding. And we have also uh, within our borrowers, we have, uh, we have many people coming back to us. Maybe after years, they come back and yeah. ask for another loan. Uh, loan. That's, I think it's to, to sum it up, yes. It's, it gives quite experience if you are uh, nearly 12 years in the market. That's great. That's great. Thanks for sharing with us. But uh, can you tell us more about the current and even maybe the future products mm -hmm. on the table now on Cashier? This year we we achieved a lot. Uh, it was a very good year. We launched uh, fixed term loans for SME and we are planning to offer these kind of loans also to private individuals. Um, for our clients, it's now possible to pledge loans with crypto assets, which is maybe a speciality in the Zug area where we are based. Um, we are now an exclusive partner of uh, Benedikt Schulen, one of the big uh, uh, Erwachsenenbildungsinstitutions mm -hmm. in Switzerland, and we do finance their loans uh, for their pupils for their mm -hmm. education. And we are about to relaunch our website. And last but not least, we will end this year with the introduction of a secondary market, ah, great. which is uh, something very exciting uh, to me, uh, who is uh, responsible for the investor side, because I believe that the secondary market uh, will, uh, will push further uh, attractivity of a platform to, to make investments. As I said, in general, we are extremely happy with uh, 2019 it was the most successful year in our history and we will end up with an excellent financial result and and we are quite happy and we are extremely positive for for next year um, because uh, yeah crowd lending in general is, is picking up uh, gain some visibility uh, many players in the industry had some airtime in the media and maybe in even on TV mm -hmm. sometimes, mm -hmm. on the radio, in the social media. And I think we, we, we become recognized as a form of financing uh, for, for many people and Cash Air will, uh, will take part in this journey as well. That's great. That's great. Maybe a quick follow-up question regarding this. So you spoke a little bit about the industry as a whole, and you're saying so now it's 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 getting some more visibility and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you see how do you see the role of cash air in this in this picture? I think it's a it's a role of uh, of uh, maybe of the the forerunner of the mm -hmm. industry. And we were uh, quite a lot of time. A uh, lot of time we were uh, we were alone. Yeah. We were the only uh, fintech in the first place. We were the only crowd lending platform for years and years. And in in maybe some sort we were too early even <laughs> because you have to think that back in two thousand eight, I think the smartphone won was sold in 2007 if, yeah. if i remember yeah. correctly and nowadays we can profit from all of this and i think in general uh, we are we are now equal competition uh, became more interesting in the mm -hmm. crowd lending business mm -hmm. and we had uh, some innovations uh, in the in the crowd lending business and that, that was very 
very exciting to to see that uh, we are on the right path and others follow and maybe others are catching up and uh, i think as an industry uh, every player has to to find its own way because the the basis is not always the same yes. uh kind of uh, for example acredius your uh, companies specializing on SME loans. Yes. We have a more a broader strategy. Mm -hmm. Others are specializing on other loans. I mm -hmm. think that's a that's a way everybody has to to find itself. And as uh, our market economy will show, uh, development and mm -hmm. creativity will lead to different solutions. And for our clients, as an industry, for our clients, the offering will be better in the future. Excellent. I really like it. That's that's also part of our mission because mm -hmm. we are we are here to offer better solutions to our clients. Absolutely. And basically competition brings that you mm -hmm. know to a higher level. So Absolutely. that's great. So I assume in car share a, a big portion of the loans are consumer loans. So what do you think is particular to uh, consumer crowd lending as compared to other mm -hmm. verticals like uh, SMEs or real estate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. We started out with consumer loans, as I think internationally every uh, mm -hmm. platform did. Um, we diversified our business and are doing uh, SMEs and, and uh, mortgages as well now. Uh, but you ask about consumer lending. Consumer lending in Switzerland is precisely regulated by the KKG, the Konsumkreditgesetz. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's uh, on one hand, it's a bit uh, complicated because you're restricted. On the other hand, uh, it's quite uh, easy because you just have to, to fit uh, in the box. You, you have just to fit in the box. <laughs> Absolutely, because if you're out the box, outside the box, you're uh, in illegal territory. And therefore, our algorithm is just, uh, first of all, the law, yeah. which has to be respected. In contrast, as you know, SME, there you have more flexibility to mm -hmm. find uh, creative solutions with your customers. Uh, but uh, coming back to consumer lending, there we have um, we have quite a lot of customers still. We, we do have quite a lot. Uh, the average size is around, let's say, uh, 20, 30,000. It's uh, mainly it's uh, for consumer purpose. <laughs> Course. Buying cars, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> financing, uh, furniture, mm -hmm. whatsoever, which is on our web page, always uh, well explained and depicted uh, even with icons mm -hmm. that you can navigate as an investor um, and build your preferences. Investors like to, to have preferences on the loans. Uh, logically, if it's uh, under the cock hockey, it's um, it's a loan without collateral. Mm -hmm. We do also loans for private individuals with collateral. Okay. There we developed uh, uh, mortgage securities, uh, which is uh, quite an interesting market uh, because many people uh, are living in their estates, in their flat, mm -hmm. maybe they're homeowners of a flat or of a um of a, a nice house and they're locked because the bank won't finance more it's yeah. not like for example in yeah. the states where the bar bank is willing at every point uh, to give more money um which means that we can uh, cover sometimes uh, uh, the, the difference of the actual value mm -hmm. and the existing bank mortgage that's quite an interesting uh, business we developed over the years and we are doing SMEs for several years now, and SME loans are, by definition, they are bigger. There are many of them yeah. are in the, in the six-digit uh, uh, range, several hundred thousands are possible. We are doing, as, as many of our uh, other fellows in the market, we're doing up to one million. And... Uh, and we do sometimes up to one million, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we can finance it. We are needs a bit time, but uh, it works with our crowd and our institutional investors. And I think one of the main differences between consumer loans and and SME um, and mortgages is that uh, consumer loans can be 
quite easily uh, built in an algorithm and the credit scoring is tr straightforward and, and nearly 100% automated mm -hmm. uh, with us. But uh, for SME and real estate, it still needs uh, some human intelligence. And there we are quite happy to have trained senior staff for all the steps in the, in the processes, uh, especially for real estate, because real estate evaluation is key. Yeah. And there we have, uh, yeah, we have the stuff uh, to, to end up with the right valuation, which gives the comfort to us and to our investors. Great. So how do you see the competition in terms of consumer loans, specifically with, with, with banks and other consumer loan mm -hmm. providers? In all, in all lending disciplines, competition with traditional banks or lenders is prevailing. Mm -hmm. um, as the crowd lending survey of the University of Lucer Lucerne points out, and your yeah. first uh, podcast yeah. was uh, Simon, um, um, our new business models are, are not yet relevant, neither in the market for consumer loans nor in the market for SME loans, not even to speak about mortgages. <laughs> Uh, we are far away and that means there is plenty of, of room to, to gain uh, market share. And I'm fairly optimistic that crowd lending platforms can further grow in the Swiss uh, credit market and gain a relevant market share. As you see, growing market shares in other countries and over time. And I, I assume that uh, first uh, in the consumer lending part, uh, a relevant market share will be achieved. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's a more focused market, you you can make more, uh, and it's it's quite uh, let's say the the big uh, players uh, they share about eighty percent of the market and they they block kind of the market and I think this gives uh, plenty of uh, opportunities for for newcomers either classical uh, lenders or crowd lending platforms uh, to, to gain market share. Great. So from, from the investor perspective, whatever, mm -hmm. retail or institutional investor, what are the main advantages of this new asset class, crowd mm -hmm. lending as such? Yeah. Um, and investing in credit was until now the privilege of banks and institutional investors. Classically, a bank over its balance sheet invests in credit, uh, collects uh, money and then invests in credit. Mm -hmm. That's a classical bank business. Um, and this bank business, especially for consumer loans, as you asked before uh, the, the consumer loan question, for consumer loans, the banks in Switzerland, they have gross margins over 5%. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. Yes. The biggest player uh, is uh, at the stock market and uh, it's public information. You can read it. Everybody of us can read mm -hmm. it. And for others, we can assume that uh, the gross margin is about always in that range. Uh, with crowd lending now, private individuals can tap that revenue stream which is um, to, to me in Switzerland, apart from lending to your neighbor some money, it's the first time that you can systematically invest in credit as a private individual. Mm -hmm. And many of the crowd investors like also to have the possibility to, to choose their investment, to have transparency, to read about the project. And like this, to learn about this, their investment. I, I think that's one of the, the most innovative ideas of, uh, of crowd lending, of us, mm -hmm. the platforms, that instead of this opaque investment in a bank where these banksters invest somewhere, <laughs> most of the time in fishy, dodgy things, as people think, which is not true, not yeah. always at least. <laughs> but on the crowd lending platform, you have the transparency as an mm -hmm. investor and you invest in what you want to invest. Mm -hmm. If you have a preference of high yield, you invest in a private loan. If you have a preference of uh, helping uh, somebody in its business, you invest in an SME loan. And that's great. And that's something which is, uh, I think, uh, one of these modern ideas in our new world that every individual don't want to go by an agent. Everybody wants to choose 
himself, herself, what she or he is doing, mm -hmm. especially with your money. And I think uh, that's something very, very uh, positive for crowd lending to, to, to act as, a, as an investor on such a uh, platform. And the very, maybe a hidden advantage is that you can diversify your investments yep. because crowd lending is not so much correlated to, to bonds and not very much to stocks. Yep. And in that sense, I'm more optimistic than in the near future, every reasonable investor will have some portion in crowd lending invested. Yes. Yeah, that's a great point. I always say it. It's 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 good to diversify, but you need a great diversifier, <laughs> which is not something Absolutely that true, is yeah. always there. Mm -hmm. Great. So, uh, speaking again about this industry, so is there anything like this in your mind that you believe everyone should be working towards? Mm -hmm. I think uh, as a young industry, as as I pointed out before. Um, everybody, every player has to find his way. Uh, everybody has his specific um, yeah, uh, knowledge. Everybody has his specific uh, atu, uh, mm -hmm. trumps, uh, yeah. which you can act, uh, USPs. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, we are we are still in a very creative phases of the industry, and it, it future will show which business model. Uh, will uh, will sort of uh, act better than others. Mm -hmm. There will be some players finding a niche. There will be some players uh, becoming really big uh, mm -hmm. and having a relevant market share. I think, therefore, there is no uh, general uh, path for the for the crowd lending industry because it's too young to be decisive. A um, very important thing, nevertheless, in my point of view, is uh, even more than credit origination, the biggest challenge is funding. Mm -hmm. um, only with a stable and diversified source of funding, a platform can attract enough credit projects. And traditional banks have, nowadays, uh, they have nearly unlimited funding possibilities. And that's, that makes a really strong uh, competition to the traditional banks and with a gross margin as i mentioned before they can lower their margin yeah. uh, without any problem and they will still uh, earn lots of money i think to to outcompete banks it's really key to solve the funding conundrum for us to crowd lend sure. platforms i think this will be the the platform among us uh, which uh, achieves a really smart way to have a stable funding uh, will be very successful. I agree, totally agree on that statement. Um, so, uh, what would be your recommendation or advice for any beginner private investor? So, uh, somebody having a job, not mm -hmm. a life, and he wants to go into this asset class mm -hmm. this crowd lending and invest in other maybe uh, consumer crowd lending. yeah sure so uh, what what would be your advice what what would you say to this person yeah. I, I think uh, in general as for every investment there are, there are only three rules and uh, this is diversify diversify and diversify three rules this is three rules <laughs> yes <laughs> Because crowd lending gives you the opportunity to profit from your investment, uh, maybe from a 9.0% uh, uh, blank loan to a private individual for buying a car, but you also have to bear the risk. And in that sense, it's instead of investing 1,000 Swiss francs in one loan, it's much better to invest 100 francs in 10 loans. And I think that diversification is, is the most simple thing an investor can do. Um, and uh, unfortunately, it's not done so regularly. That means, first of all, in your whole assets, you have to decide which portion you want to invest in what. First of all, you need liquidity for your daily 
life but then maybe you have excess liquidity and then you have to invest and according to your risk appetite uh, maybe riskier investments as crowd lending are possible but then it's not uh, it's not really a good idea to invest everything in crowd lending invest in different asset classes that's also diversification and then invest uh, quite a portion of your um, uh, fortune in crowd lending uh, but then choose several projects for example and like this you will have uh, a natural diversification and even if there is a uh, defaulted loan uh, then you can bear with a higher interest rate you gain most probably with crowd lending you will bear such a loss and finally you will have a positive return mm -hmm. in your crowd lending portfolio and that's a that's a personal mission i'm on as well to educate uh, investors and it i did quite a lot of uh, blogs i did quite of uh, i did even uh, vlogs video logs uh, distributed on uh, social media and i think that's something extremely important to to educate people in general about uh, investing how to invest but also how to invest on a crowd lending platform you have to choose wisely your target investment all the informations are available crowd lending is transparent and then use it inform yourself and then invest that's a bit uh, the things I can say about it. That's great. That's great. Thanks you very much for sharing these insights and these recommendations. We come to the end of our episode, <laughs> but I will not leave you without <laughs> our last question that the everybody, famous one. everybody in this podcast so far answered. The first two tried to trick me out of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, they did not succeed. <laughs> Let's see what you what you what you tell me about it. So, uh, Michael, what is your favorite fruit? Uh, I'm I was prepared on that one because ah. I listened all the two predecessors, okay. and uh, but I'm an easy target because I love fruit in general, okay. uh, and I, I prefer them over vegetables. Right. Um, and as a kid, I was totally fixed on strawberries and pineapple. <laughs> okay. Um, also, I ate other fruits as well, but strawberries were my favorites and pineapple as well. And with age, I started to love all fruit depending uh, on, on the season, depending uh, where I am, maybe abroad. Uh, there are special fruits uh, on the market, which I love to, to try out. Um, and I prefer fresh fruit along the season. Uh, for the very moment, I eat uh, several oranges a day. Several? Uh, several oranges a day, <laughs> okay. yes. I, I love them. And that's the season, this, this nasty, foggy, cold season, which gives at least uh, some nice oranges. And anyway, my daily breakfast includes always a grapefruit every okay. day. <laughs> You're still trying to trick me out of the question. <laughs> I will okay. not leave you without it. So if you choose, if like you have only one last wish of a fruit, which one would it be? Maybe passion fruit. Passion fruit. Yeah. So you started with pineapple, <laughs> <laughs> strawberry, and at the end you tell me passion fruit. Yeah, if it's the last fruit in my life, it's maybe passion fruit, yes. Passion fruit. Mm -hmm. Excellent. A fresh one. <laughs> a fresh one, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Michael, for all the insi insights you shared today with our listeners. Um, good luck with uh, Kashir and your next uh, steps. And uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you very much, Kashir, and thank you for the initiative to make this podcast for our industry. My thank pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks again for staying with us until the end. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast and follow us on social media so you never miss an episode. Please don't hesitate to send us your questions and comments at acridius.ch. Thank you.